Okay folks, here's a recap of the gear that I'm taking up Everest in March of 16. Uh, I did this last year before I took off and that was a popular video so I thought it would be fun to do the same thing again if anybody's interested to see how it goes. A quick summary is that it's almost identical to last year. There's a few things that are different in some cases because I had to leave gear behind at Camp 2 during the evacuation, and in other cases because there's stuff that I kind of wish I had had last time, but very little. Basically, following the IMG gear list was perfect last time, and just a few tweaks compared to what I did before. So we'll start with different systems. We'll start with the feet and work our way up. Foot systems, important to have some comfortable sandals to wear on the plane and around Kathmandu where it's hot and humid, so these have served me well for the last 10 years. I'll keep them going. For the approach trek, um, you need something that fits well and is relatively waterproof and lightweight. These are the same Asolo extra wide boots that I love and that fit me so well. And I do have the blue super feet inside. Those are a good orthotic for me, just enough arch support to keep them comfortable. I've hit these with extra waterproofing twice uh, in the last couple of days, so they should be extra ready to shed any snow that I get into. For EBC, um, we have these, this is a new feature for me, these uh, Sorel Caribou boots. They're very, very warm. They're super tough and durable, and they should do well on the moraine that is, um, you know, that is uh, EBC. When we get higher, uh, for example, above uh, EBC, these super duper lightweight and very compactable down booties should be helpful as well. The ones I had last year are still at Camp 2. We're hoping they're there, but there's no way to guarantee that they haven't been wiped away, so I have to replace those. And obviously, my Olympus Mons boots that have gotten me up and down a bunch of mountains, they work very well. They fit me perfectly. I have customized them with Dave Page the Collier, the Cobbler. Uh, Dave Page has added some extra Velcro here so I don't get that lateral tongue migration as you march along. I tend to get that, and then some of these eyelets will start rubbing against my shins. That's a bad look. So I've pimped them out a little bit. They will also have the electronic um, uh, hot foot warmers with an extension cord so I can keep the battery packs up on my torso on, uh, on summit day. In terms of socks, that's also part of our foot system. Just a variety of socks. Everything you see is made with merino wool. They're just a variety of different thicknesses. So this is one of my favorite things for the approach and even for Kathmandu if I have to, which is called the Good Hue uh, Merino Sock. It has some bamboo fibers in there too. Something uh, from REI, which is a merino sock, a little bit heavier. I like this one also from REI, very lightweight, but a taller back to it so I don't get as much chafing around my ankles here on the boot when I use them. And then just some more wool socks. It's good to have a few changes. Last time when I started the expedition, I think I had five pair of socks for the expedition. It's good to have a few more. So I've added a few either for tooling around camp or the tea houses after we walk um, or for actually marching in uh, during the trek in. For actual climbing, I have uh, three identical pair of these socks. They're Smartwool PhD ski socks, so they have the extra padding for the shin. I need that for the Olympus Mons boots. It helps to reduce friction. I always wear them inside out so that I don't get uh, friction along my toenails where the toe seam is. They're relatively small seam, but that's a good trick that's helped me before. And then I have these two very similar super heavyweight mountaineering socks, one by REI, one by Smart Wool. I usually just wear these in camp uh, underneath, for example, the Sorrells. I've never worn them actually mountaineering on summit day. I worry that they're going to scooch down and fold a, a little fold under my sole of my foot. I'm worried about that. But it's Everest, and so I may need to come up with a warmer solution than what I usually do with these. Um, what else? Leg system. So underwear, I'm usually in these ex officio boxer briefs. They're super breathable, lightweight, very uh, durable. I've got, I think, seven pair of those for the whole trip, including Kathmandu, clean pair to come into. Um, old cotton scrubs to wear in Kathmandu uh, in the hotel when I go to bed. Swimming suit, in case there's ever a chance to actually go swimming at some point in Kathmandu. Then I have four very lightweight trekking pants, one for the plane, one to stay in Kathmandu, and then two to take up on the trek. Sun resistance, wind resistance, and very uh, lightweight and breathable and comfortable. Uh, for general purposes, I have these two identical 
Patagonia pants. This is what I wear here in Seattle when I'm not at work. This is all I own, basically. Super comfortable uh, and pretty durable, too. So that's what I'll wear uh, most of the time above, um, well, when we get to EBC. This is what I'll wear around camp. For climbing, I have one pair of climbing pants by Rab, and um, these have served me very well before. Heavier than these, a little bit of a fleece liner, more uh, waterproof than the other stuff that you see here. If things get cold, especially for around camp, and I will probably bring these above, uh, up to camp too as well, just insulated pants. Most people bring mountain hardware compressors. These are first ascent um, pants. They're made with prima loft and not down, so they're not as warm, but they're much more uh, moisture resistant. That's good for me. In terms of insulating layers, yeah, merino wool boxer briefs. Great pair of underwear. My other pair is still up at camp too, I hope. So I had to replace those. On top of that goes an identical pair of long uh, underwear. It's actually three-quarter length, so they've been hemmed so that they don't bunch up around my ankles when I'm in the tall boots on summit day. Also hemmed out a Patagonia, uh, sort of mid-weight, not super heavy, uh, synthetic underwear to go on top of the wool. This is another uh, pair of wool long underwear that I did not bring last time. It's by Smart Wool. It's really for the approach trek for those cold nights. Um, in the tea houses and stuff like that. A pair of, well, basically fleece jogging pants or sweatpants is what they are. I picked these up in Namche. Very comfortable, very versatile, and I'm eager to get back into those. Oh, and then, yeah, shell pants, right? So these are my Arcteric shell pants. They will be in my pack every day of the trip. I will never wear them. That's just the way it is, but that's what we do. In terms of trunk systems and top systems, I have several short sleeve t-shirts one for the plane, one for Kathmandu, and then a couple that I might bring up higher. I will never be outside in a short sleeve shirt, basically. It just puts my arms at risk for sunburn, etc. But sometimes you want to have something you can slip into that's relatively clean and odor free, and then get your longer sleeve base layer on top of that. Uh, here's a long sleeve shirt for Kathmandu in case it's unexpectedly cool there. For the approach trek, I have two sun shirts. These are button down sun shirts. One's Mountain Hardware, one's REI. I like these a lot. Most people do not wear these. They'll just bring a zip tee. I find that these breathe much better. They just have mesh in them. Uh, the airflow is superior. I think having buttons all the way down the front lets it breathe as you, as you breathe and move. So that's what I'm going to bring. That worked well last time. And then I have three, um, you know, long sleeve t-shirts. This is a merino wool one by Icebreaker. Beautiful, super lightweight, very comfortable one by uh, OR. And then one by REI, which is to replace the Patagonia layer that's still sitting at Camp 2. And then I also have one by Sherpa that I picked up in Namche, which I'm happy to bring. It's a little bit heavier. Man, it holds on to the body odor like nothing you can imagine. So not great for this expedition. But we do have access to laundry, so I'm thinking I'll bring that just as one extra option. In terms of actual warm layers... You know, let's see, here's a hoodie that I'll wear on the airplane, but in terms of actually climbing, this is the layer that I'll be in most. This is a um, Ibex hoodie. Uh, it's not super heavy, but it's just pure merino wool. It breathes beautifully, it's totally odor resistant, and that's going to be my go-to work layer when climbing. I also have two um, Patagonia, you know, just uh, maybe quarter zip. Uh, synthetic long underwear tops, one's orange, one's black, they are the same thing. That's important to be able to get into as um, you go up the mountain. If you get sweaty, tear off one, get into the other. Things get a little more burly. I've got the R1 Flash hoodie, also Patagonia, a good go-to layer. Here's um, my um, Patagonia Micro Puff Down uh, sweater, also with a hood on top of it. It's a good mid-layer to get right on underneath the outer shell. I do bring this lightweight OR Helium. It's great because it compacts down nicely. It gives me some extra moisture protection if we get into grovel that turns into rain or something like that. But basically, this just goes in the pack, and I'll use it rarely because my outer go-to layer is this Ancilta um, soft shell with a big hood, high pockets that go over the uh, harness, and I've hit this three times with water repellent in the last couple of weeks, so it really should be bomber and bulletproof, and that is my go-to work layer the entire expedition. Works quite well. If things get cold, what do we do uh, for the top? So this is my Peak 15 
down parka by first descent. I like it. Uh, it's lightweight. It's very compact, and it performs well. Um, and I got away with this just fine on the last expedition. This is what will go in my pack above EBC. I sort of wished last time that I had had this, which is my Marmot super big, heavy down parka. This, you could basically sum it in this. I'm thinking of bringing it because it does compact down pretty well. It's light, and this way I can just throw this on at EBC, and I'm good to go. One and done. Um, whereas when you're up higher, you want something that's more compact, you're going to get into multiple layers. This is for climbing, this is for relaxing at camp. That's the way I'm sort of thinking about it. So that's a new thing I'm going to bring this year. EBC was much colder uh, and much less comfortable than I would have thought. It's just always moist, it's always drafty. It's, um, you just want to be warm and comfortable if you possibly can. Uh, in terms of hand systems, what do we got? So for sun protection, um, I've got these gloves. They're made by Buff. They're built for deep sea fishing. So they're good for sun protection and there's a little bit of dexterity because you have a couple of fingertips sticking out. And the snot and brow wiper feature of this uh, terry cloth is great. They're really getting ratty. I should probably replace them, but they're working fine. Uh, for working uh, the lines, if we're just doing some training outside of uh, EBC in the moraine, or maybe even coming down uh, on the way down through the ice fall. These climbing gloves by Hestra, they do have uh, a layer of insulation. They're basically just leather climbing gloves, but they're a little bit warmer than just strict leather. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to being able to use those if I can. Um, these are some cloth or synthetic gloves that are good for an extra layer on top of these, which are two identical pair of merino liner gloves by Smartwool. And they are amazing. They do have a little bit of metal fibers in the tips of the fingers. You can work smartphone or whatever you have to do that way. Uh, and these go on at the beginning of the trip, and I rarely take them off. Uh, they're just such a good barrier. And I do tend to wear through them. They're very delicate. That's why we have two pair. Last time, I was in these OR Point and Shoot as my go-to climbing glove. They're great because they've got the lobster style, so these three fingers stay warm. You do have dexterity of the trigger finger and the thumb. And they worked very well, and so I may, in fact, uh, these will always be in my pack when we're going uh, up above EBC for sure. One thing I've added this year that's a little bit different is this. So this is the Lucent OR battery-powered glove. Uh, so the idea is that you can actually get your dexterity of all the fingers, and yet because there's a battery pack in here, you can drive three different levels of, of heating. I did take this to Ure uh, when we went ice climbing a couple of months ago. It worked very well. I actually have three extra sets of batteries for this. Whether it's burly enough for summit day or if it would be an option for summit day in addition to the other gloves I'm going to show you, not sure yet. Uh, they're not built for the summit of Mount Everest, but with several layers of gloves underneath, they may actually be able to do the trick. This is what everybody summits in, right? Your summit gloves by Outdoor Research. I've taken these everywhere. Well the prior version, I finally realized yesterday that the loft was shot. I took them to OR, they agreed, they were just too old. So I have replaced them. These are brand new gloves and I'm looking forward to uh, being able to try these out as well. More dexterity, the extra second glove layer inside, pretty warm stuff. And finally, if I get into real trouble, I do have my Summit Mitts. These are by Mountain Hardware. Um, the pair that I had before by first descent, still waiting for me up at, at Camp 2. So. I can't assume they're there. I've had to replace them. These are undoubtedly the single warmest pair of mittens I've ever seen. They're unbelievably good. And it's only a single layer. Uh, you cannot pull out the liner itself, which at first I thought was bad, but the truth is you're only going to wear these once or twice in a lifetime. It's probably okay. Um, then thinking about head systems, what do we have here? Uh, the sombrero is down here. This is super important for... Uh, sun protection of course. Another sun hat that I have is this one by OR and it's got the little neck gaiter underneath it. Pottinger coat of arms on the top. Uh, sweat band by Head Sweats. I like this one a lot. Four buffs. You can't get enough of those wonderful buff and so I have four of them. I'll probably get a fifth one when I get to Kathmandu. Super important. These are always covering me. I usually have no skin at all exposed. They help filter out dust on the trail, the yak feces that's flying through the air. But it's also a great way to keep the wind and the sun off of your skin. For insulation and warmth, um, I do have this uh, Marmot uh, Merino wool hat, which I like very much. 
And then a nice feature to replace the Wapatai Woolies custom hat that I had to leave at camp too. My lovely mother-in-law has knitted me a new hat out of merino wool with the ear flaps. They can either be tied up or brought down. So that's really nice. I'll probably have a buff underneath and then this wool hat, which is super. Just for being around base camp, this is another new feature, uh, which is this Mad Bomber hat. It's incredibly warm, and uh, there are many times at EBC I wished I had brought this last time, so I am bringing it uh, this time as well. For actual climbing, what are we talking about? I have two balaclavas. Uh, this is the first one, which is uh, set to work with my goggle system that I'll show you in the next video. I've modified it, so this is an extra piece of fabric that's added here so that when the goggles are there, I don't get uh, sunburn and windburn on my cheeks. I've also had the tailor add a little knuckle of fabric here to the nose. Without that, the nose would, um, would always slip down or pinch up too high. It wasn't fitting quite right. I don't have a very big nose, but that's an additional feature, which is good. And then along the same lines is the Summit uh, Balaclava. This is an OR Gorilla Clava. I'm not a big fan of the Gorilla system. It's too complicated, but when you have an oxygen mask, you need that. So basically, the face piece comes off on Summit Day, or above Camp 3. And then you end up with this, which is a standard balaclava. And again, I've asked them to, uh, over at Rainy Pass Repair, I've had them add this extra diamond of fabric. The idea is that when you have the mask down here and the goggles up here, you don't get sunburn or windburn on your cheeks. I'll have full coverage. That's it for the clothing systems. Oh, except for one more thing, which is important. When I'm climbing, I'm going to be climbing in this, which is my down suit by Feathered Friends. Um, that's what I'll wear above Camp 2 on the expedition. Now, in the next video, we'll go through sleep systems, nutrition, hydration, electronics, and technical gear and safety systems. Thanks.